day. Ran okay. Uh, there's definitely lots of room for improvement. Definitely need to work on the timing. On a hill, it's it's drivable, but man, it, it is a royal turd. Because if you get into the throttle any amount at all, it'll pull the timing back. Flat ground does just fine. Um, other than that, it's running pretty good. A fuel up at the house, pull hopper halfway here, top it off. Uh, the top off was about two and a half bags close to. Didn't have to refuel the rest of the way in. Um, and that's, uh, oh, what is it, like 55 miles or something like that to get here to work. So she's running pretty good. Um, I'm going to go through and drain all the condensates out, just see how it looks. I did drain after my drive yesterday, but I want to see how much I'm going to drain out after this drive. Uh, I will mention I did have a little bit of a sticky throttle this morning. Um, rolled over just fine, no issues. Fired right up, ran it on gasoline for a couple minutes. Uh, warmed it up on gasoline this morning, drove all the way in on wood. So she's running pretty good, but let's get uh, the maintenance side of things done and get the condensate drained. Just like any long-term project, you always gotta work the bugs out. This is technically the third test drive. Um, if you watch right here, I've got some water leaking out of this cap. It's also leaking out of the other side. Um, the rails aren't even warm. A little warm up towards the top up here. Side rails are completely cool, which is good because that's where I've, I've got my fuel bag sitting against it. So I have to figure out something. I don't know if the, the rubber from the mud flap gasket is too hard or what. Also, because this thing is so tall, it's going to be very splashy. I'm going to try and line the bucket up as best I can and not make a giant leak. Giant mess, I should say. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, you also know that I, uh, I'm pretty good at making messes. <laughs> so that isn't much. That's probably only maybe five cups out of the hay filter that's good hopefully that means the rest of everything is condensing the moisture out before it gets too much of it into the hay um, one difference on this truck I probably won't be draining the slingshot filters um, as often as the Toyota I might end up needing to but they sit over the top of the frame rail so if I pull those caps off they're gonna make a giant mess and I don't want to do that in the shop in the morning See, that's my normal routine. I'll pull whatever wood burner I'm driving. Now it might be the Dodge or it might be the Toyota and drain all of my condensates every day. And that has a lot to do, I believe, with um, the weather in the area that I live in. Pacific Northwest, it's always wet. It's always rainy. Um, most of my wood I've been running is 9 to 15% moisture. And I still pick up a crap ton of it of uh, condensate every day. So move on to the back condensate tank real quick. Once again, try not to make a giant mess. Oh, had a good bit of soot sitting in that thing. You can see it's actually solidified soot. Looks like that was probably a gallon and a half. That's a little bit less than the Toyota normally. I don't know how much of a difference it's all going to make, but I do have a considerable amount more uh, cooling capacity on this truck than Toyota. Toyota has like 51 feet total of cooling rails. And I think I measured this one out, I have 73 feet. And that's including the side rails, the posts, the bed frame, the headboard, the whole nine. I'll show you real quick. Quite a bit of soot in there, which I expect because the soot has to start building up on everything. Now the gas fire is still completely hot. 
So I'm going to be careful not to burn myself on the bottom barrel because I know there's not a lot of insulation built up in it yet. So it's uh, warmer than it normally would be. Once it's insulated, it should cool down quite a bit. Open this handle here. See the handle in the back there, just pouring away. Now we're gonna start getting the froth in the bucket because uh, one of these is acidic, one of these is alkaline. Those are big words for me, so uh, don't ask me to try and explain that. <laughs> I'm still learning this stuff. I, I'm, I was, when I got into wood gas, I was far more interested in the fact you could run an engine on it and I didn't feel the need to learn all the nuances about it, the chemical reactions and whatnot. I am learning it now. Now remember, the drain valve sits about that deep. So there's still probably a gallon and a half of uh, condensate in here, but we're gonna let that sit. We'll drain off the water every day. And once it fills up to that level and it starts draining out tar, then we can open up the big, big cap here and uh, get our tar out of it so there's the frothy gnarly mixture and this reaction only happens when you mix um, the hopper condensate and the rear tank condensate you get this foamy sludgy stuff let's see actual liquid looks like we pulled probably close to three gallons uh, total which is a little bit less than the Toyota. We're also coming into our wet and rainy season here. So atmosphere, moisture content and everything, we're gonna start harvesting a lot more uh, condensate than during the summer months, especially when it's super dry outside and not very humid. And I've got wood that's much drier. Now that we're going into the rainy season here in Pacific Northwest, there's almost nothing you can do except store wood inside. It will wick moisture out of the environment and it'll start pulling its moisture content back up that's why i keep most of my wood stored in the back room got fans on it got heat on it and still i mean i think the lowest percentage i've seen moisture content in my wood is about nine percent so that's pretty good that's a uh, first long run into work and other than the timing being an absolute turd performing really nicely. Thanks for watching.